Hey guys, welcome back for another video. So today we are gonna do a few different things. I'm gonna try to make it as short and sweet as possible, but basically I want to know what are the actual effects, the real world effects on a watch of magnetism. Something that's interesting happened. I got a watch back, I'll show it to you right here, uh, directly from TAG, just came back from a full service. After 17 years of use, it needed it. Just got my Carrera Chrono back and I was playing around with an app to detect magnetism and it is magnetized. Thought that was pretty curious. So then I started testing a bunch of other new watches that I got, and I mean just got. They've been worn a few times here and there, but for the most part, they're just sitting in my display boxes and a bunch of them were also magnetized right out of the box as shipped to me. But not all of them. Some of them are perfectly fine and some I haven't tested yet. So I wanted to wait until this video because I've got my time grapher set up. What I'm gonna do is take before measurements of everything just for my data and for this video and then whichever ones are magnetized, I'm gonna demagnetize with my demagnetizer. I'll show you how to use that. We'll verify that it actually did demagnetize and then we're gonna measure again and we're gonna see what happened. Now, I got all the data for everything except two of the watches that I'm gonna be testing. I've got all the different positions that I'm gonna be measuring, and I found the movements and the lift angles, because you need to program in the lift angle to the machine for proper measurement. But the Orient and the Pagani design, they don't publish their lift angle specs, and no one's officially measured them. So I just went with 51 for both of those. It's not super important for this purpose, because we're just looking for the before and after differences or delta. Uh, but if you were working on it, then it would be important because that is what helps calculate the amplitude. And if you're actually working on it, that does need to be accurate. But for these purposes, we're primarily gonna be looking at the rate deltas. So, first of all, let's do some demagnetization. I'll show you how it works here. So I've got, it, funny story, what kind of led me to this video, I was working on stuff and I had a bunch of stuff on my old table and I set a tool down. I, I can't remember if it was this one or another one. It was, it was another one, but it was similar to this, you know, just a piece of metal. I set it down like this on something else and I didn't know that something else had a magnet inside. It didn't stick to it much, but I noticed it when I picked the tool up that, you know, it, it had a little bit of magnetic stick. I'm like, uh-oh. So I tested it and I put it next to a tool and it stuck. Now this isn't because I already demagnetized it. But let's see what happens if you magnetize something. So I've got a magnet in the bottom of this pen light here. See, see how it's pulling it? So that is slightly magnetized just from that brief contact. All right, so let's get rid of that by just using our tool here. You just plug it in. Holding down this button on its own, nothing's happening. But if you get a piece of metal inside the magnetic field, there's a coil in here, and when you turn it on and energize it, it vibrates. So you get this metal close. Now the whole thing is vibrating. See? So I'm gonna hold this down just off of it here for about 10 seconds and then slowly lift it straight up out of the magnetic field. And this should clear whatever's stored in this metal. Another couple seconds. And then we'll slowly raise it up while holding down the button. It's out of the field. Okay, now let's test it again. And we shouldn't have that magnetic pull anymore. Nothing. So that's how you demagnetize anything you accidentally magnetized. <laughs> but what does that actually mean for a watch? I mean, it's a pretty well-known fact that you stay away from magnets, but why? What exactly does it do? Is it gonna make the watch run faster, slower, erratic, increase the beat error? I have no idea. So this is an app on iOS. There are Android equivalents. Basically, it's using the sensor in the iPhone here to find magnetism. It's already configured and set up. So let's go ahead and start with the Khaki King Automatic. 
from Hamilton and we have magnetism detected. This is new. So we'll set this guy over here. We've got a Pagani design skeleton, also new. No magnetism, so he's good to go. We'll set him over here. We've got a Sugus Pandacrano, also new. Magnetism, set this guy over here. We've got a Tag Carrera Crano, fresh back from service, only been worn a couple times since. This one has been very, very slightly detecting. It's not right now, but I saw it blip before. I'm going to call it a no. Oh, nope. I'm going to call it a yes. So there we go. If we hit the right spot on the sensor, it's very easy. All right, so we'll set him over there. He needs some work. Got an Orient Contemporary, also new. Yep, detected. We've got a Seiko Mockingbird, also new. Clean. All right, he goes over there. And last, we'll do a Hamilton Intramatic, also new. I'm just looking at these new ones here, and that is magnetic also. So five magnets and two not. Okay, so we're going to test them all just to get some data, and then we're going to demagnetize the five that showed a charge and test them again. As far as testing procedures, what I'm doing is, of course, making sure each watch is fully wound or as best as I can tell with the automatics because the barrel will slip and sometimes you can't feel the internal resistance, but I'm doing it like 35, 40 times, making sure they're up there. And then I'm giving it at least two to three minutes per test, per position, until I get a full screen with no changes. So I know that it's settled in. So here we are, boys and girls, over three hours later. Lots of tests and retests. It's all my data and notes that I've been collecting. Got it all on one succinct finalized sheet here. And surprisingly, there are some very clear takeaways as to this whole experiment. Very glad I did it. The demagnetizer, well worth $10. I think anybody that has even one mechanical watch should have it, just in case. So the main takeaway for this video, yes, it did help. But the before and afters for all five of the watches that had some form of magnetism were so good to begin with, you're never going to notice it. I'll go over the details in a second, one by one. But that's the bottom line. It's just such a small change. Whatever magnetized all these watches, you know, it's just normal life stuff. It's not like they got hit by some industrial magnet or anything like that. So unless you're seeing and noticing in real life that your watch is way off, this is nothing to stress about, nothing to worry about. If you have a demagnetizer, by all means, check your stuff every now and then, demagnetize them. Certainly doesn't hurt anything, but again, nothing to even worry about as far as, oh my God, I have to do this. <laughs> You're just not going to notice. It would take such an extreme amount of magnetism to affect the data enough to affect you even noticing it. That's the main point. So let's go over the data. Let's start here just because I was most curious about this because it did just come back from tag and I certainly expected it to be fully demagnetized, but it wasn't. So the bottom line is <clears throat> the before Delta was 14 and the after Delta is 13. We went from a negative six to eight range to a negative seven to six range. Nothing really stood out here. The numbers were pretty even all the way across. Now I was kind of surprised that the Delta was so high, especially since some of the much, much less expensive watches on here had a, a very tighter, concise range. But because the data is spread out over all six of the measured positions so evenly, that means that you're not gonna notice this thing be off it's probably going to be within a couple seconds a day of normal real world use. And that's what I've always noticed with this, even before I sent it in for service. It was always just seemed to be dead on. 
but I never measured it before. So I'm curious as to what I'm going to find now wearing this as a, a daily driver and see if I notice anything or if it just always is going to seem dead on. So the rates were all good. Like I said, a negative six to eight range, that's, that's not bad at all. I'm perfectly happy with that. The amplitudes, they're all in the mid 200s, mid to upper 200s. No problem there again. Everything just kind of tightened up just, just a little bit. That's all it did. So magnetism in this guy, nothing you would ever have to worry about. So next down, the, the, the next two, the Pagani Design and the Seiko Mockingbird had no magnetism. These are both new watches that I've only worn a few times. They've just been sitting in my case here. Nothing is near magnet. None of this is from me. So these came like they should. Good. Now here's an interesting takeaway, not related to magnetism, but one that I clearly got just because I did this test. Look at the numbers, look at the data. The Pagani, very slow, very clearly slow. Every single measurement slow. A negative 10 to negative three for a delta of seven. So not a bad delta, but overall running slow. The Seiko, exactly the opposite. We've got a delta of 10, not bad either, but running fast from seven to 17. All measurements positive and all measurements negative on the Pagani. So neither one dialed in very well, which means future videos, future practice for me. We've got very clean, brand new movements. Should be pretty easy. And I did get the upgraded gooseneck on the Pagani. Oh wait, no, that's the other one. That's my uh, Sugus. I don't know if the Pagani has any um, provisions for change or not. I'll have to look into it. But again, future videos there for me to learn and practice. So that's cool. Two easy ones to knock out there. The Hamiltons, both the Intramatic and the Khaki King Auto, very impressive data. We've got some pretty tight groupings. The Khaki King Auto, delta of seven down to a delta of four after demagnetizing it. Let me scooch it over there a little bit. There we go. Yeah, delta of seven down to a delta of four. Negative three to four to a zero to four. Very strong pulses, very evenly spread out data errors. No problems there. So, you know, again, nothing you're going to notice. Either one of those would be excellent. And uh, in real life, it's not a meaningful change. The Intramatic, this was interesting. We went from a delta of seven to a delta of seven. The numbers just kind of shifted around a little bit. Everything in the end came out the same. So it's just the different positions that had their effects. The Orient, which is a, especially this model, very low end Japanese movement, no problem with it. Again, same delta, just a bit of a shift. We went from a nine to a nine, negative five to four, to a negative four to five. <laughs> it just, again, everything kind of shifting around. The Seiko 5, now this is one I got, this is one I got <clears throat> that wasn't magnetized. So I'll get into what this is in a second. But this is what I got for a light modding project, just for having some fun on a future video. So I knew this was a very low end, very entry level, not great quality watch, but I love the dial and I've got an idea for it. So I wasn't shocked until I got to some of these numbers, like negative 40, something was up. And then I looked at the amplitude. Now, some of you are immediately seeing these numbers and you know exactly what the problem was. It wasn't the watch. We've got very low amplitudes here, a couple below 180. That's, that's weird. And the negative 40, I mean, that's just a, a crying outlier. It wasn't fully wound. See, this doesn't have a manual wind function. And I don't know exactly how many rotor rotations correlate to a crown rotation, but I shook it for a couple minutes, solid couple minutes. Figured that would be good enough. Well, this was the results after a couple minutes, not good enough. So I shook it for another three. I gave it five full minutes, you know, dial up, making sure the rotor's going. I don't still know exactly how many minutes or how many rotor rotations you need to fully wind it. There's no power meter. You can't feel anything. 
So people are kind of guessing. <laughs> yeah, I don't know uh, if anyone has an actual spec for it, but I gave it five minutes and everything dramatically improved. We went from <clears throat> obviously an erroneous delta of 48 to 16, two to nine. Now we still had some um, rates with a pretty good spread, not too far into the negatives, just negative one, but all the way up to 15 positive, and it depended on the position. So this, again, not exactly high quality movement, very position dependent on how it was actually doing, but the amplitudes all got completely normal. And the beat errors, no problem, up to 0.7 at max, not a big deal at all. Now the Sujis, this neat little chronograph, this panda guy, this was kind of a pain in the ass. I don't know why, but in the middle of testing, and this was repeatable, after about a minute or so of just sitting there, it would, it would settle, it would look completely normal, and then all of a sudden, just noise, just all over the place, like plus 400, plus 300. I put my ear up to it, I couldn't hear anything. I would kind of give it a little tick, and the stuff would go back to normal. I tried different positions, I took it off, the mechanism, repositioned it, you made sure I didn't hear anything. I, I stopped and started the chronograph and I don't know what was causing it, but it would just happen randomly where the machine was just picking up something off. So it was very hard to get clean data. It took me quite a while to get the data for this, but we went from a Delta of nine to seven. Again, slight improvement and very good and very high, um, amplitudes on these a lot of 300s so very impressed with that besides i just love the looks of this i mean it's just absolutely gorgeous and i knew this was fully wound because it's an only mechanical wind watch which i don't mind at all so there we go very cool stuff glad i did it definitely have some future videos on the way i want to definitely figure out how to dial these two in get them closer should be fairly easy. I'm thinking, you know, if as long as they have the mechanism that's appropriate to make some adjustments, I think I can learn that pretty easily, but I'm not quite there yet. Still have a lot more to go. So there you go. There's the effects of magnetism on watches. Stay tuned for more stuff. Got a lot coming up. Give you a hint. I'm taking off that five shield. And I'm going to try to make this guy look a lot more expensive than it is with just a few quick little changes. That's it. See you next time.